Hey guys, Steph here again from Card Advantage MTG. I am back from the Sunday pre-release for Aether Revolt, and uh, got another pool, so I'm going to break it down for you. In the pre-release pack, again, this hidden little dice box, which I used. These stickers, I found out, they're the um, symbol of the Rebellion. So they're, it's basically graffiti. It's everywhere around Kaladesh. People are etching it into walls with Aether. Uh, got another one of these Attention Citizens signed Tezzeret thing. Um, some... Whoa! We have some uh, background noise, which is always exciting. Um, so, my pool was just as good as it was uh, yesterday. Um, I'll go through my rares that I didn't play first, just sort of get them out of the way. Bowmat Courier, One Drop, Haste. I've never really... See, I like the card. I think it's interesting. I don't think it's very good. Um, and especially not if you're not playing red, so whatever. Peace, Weaker, War, Peace Walker... Colossus. I did open quite a few vehicles, so I feel like if I wanted to go that way, uh, it still would have been very hinky, um, but I could have. I prefer playing something a little more, um, I don't know, reliable. So that was out. Midnight Entourage. This seemed good to me, and I did end up playing black, spoiler alert, but um, I only had one other Aetherborn in my pool, so or in my deck. There are plenty in the pool, but I only played one of them. So a 3-3 three, three for fl 4 with no real relevant abilities isn't good enough, so I didn't end up playing it. Uh, plus the Devil Black was a little... Nah, not right, really what I wanted on turn 4. Um... Skyship Stalker, this would have gone well with Free Jam Regent um, yesterday. Uh, it seems really good, like it seemed fine, but I was nowhere near red. So, Dark Imitations, in Intimations, sorry, Dark Intimations is going to uh, be fun in a uh, cube environment, maybe. Um, in some commander deck or another. I don't know. It's definitely not playable in limited, considering there is no Bolas Planeswalker spell. But uh, I enjoy having one in my collection now, so there we go. On to the multicolors. I finally got a hidden stockpile, which I love. I wish I could have played, but those weren't the colors that I ended up. However, and I didn't actually see one today either. However, um, I do like the card. Cloud Blazer. I don't know if you saw the draft video um, that we did of Kaladesh. I don't think we actually put it on this channel. So if you're looking for our stuff, we have another channel. Go find it. I'm not going to link it here. Um, but I haven't actually gotten to play one in paper. I'm still sad because I love Cloud Blazer. So go through... I'll get those out of the way. I'm going to go through the artifacts real quick. Consulate Skygate. I, tr I thought about siding this in in one game, but I figured it was better just to get aggressive out of the gate. Uh, Welder Automaton, Aegis Automaton, Night Market Guard. All these are just sort of not great artifact creatures. Inventor's Goggles. I have never had enough artificers to play, so whatever. I got a lot of implements. Implement of Improvement, two of Ferocity, uh, and I did actually play one in one game, and it was okay. So that tells you what colors I played, if you're paying attention. Combustion, Malice, and there's a Decoction Module. Now, Decoction Module probably would have done some stuff in my deck, but I had enough energy, usually, to do what I wanted until the game ended, so it's better just to have a creature, generally, unless you, you're really going off on the module plan. 
two consulate turrets. I didn't play them. I had one played against me, and it was good because I fumbled, I stumbled. Um, in the other game, I just outpaced this so fast that it really didn't do it. It might as well not have done anything. Consulate Dreadnought. I did lose a game to one of these. Um, that having been said, I if I had had any removal spell, I would have been fine that game. Uh, my opponent went... It was my round three... My round four opponent. He went... Um, Consulate Dreadnought, turn one. Turn two, there was... I don't know, uh, the one three that taps for mana. Turn three... Um, um, the two two that brings in a servo. Turn four, the two two that brings in a servo. Swing. And then I was just kind of dead at that point. But that was his best start. And he really would have been better off... Um, with any other card than this, because he could have run me over with that start anyway. Anyway, Oval Chase Dragster, again, I decided not to play, because it's just not quite what I wanted to do. It's Crew 1, which is fine, but you're only likely to get one hit with it, so that's not fine. <clears throat> My white seemed pretty good. I had... Eddie Trailhawk, Countless Gears Renegade, Audacious Infiltrator, Deadeye Harpooner. If I had been able to splash this, I would have. Uh, Aether Inspector is okay. Felidar Guardian is, is good if that's what you're doing. And then a bunch of combat tricks and removal. So my void is good, but it's not particularly deep. So I ended up just not going that way. Blue, I had Aether Swooper, Trophy Mage, Hinterland Drake, and that's it for blue... Cr oh, and a Curio Vendor. Ooh. That's it for blue creatures. Oh, and a Windrake. Okay, that's it for blue creatures. My um, blue spells seemed okay. Like, I would have loved to play this. I would have loved to play this. But, again, not enough to build a deck there. Black... Most of my black is in my deck. Um, I briefly... I had this in my sideboard, and I sided in, in one game, and it was... I don't know, I never drew it, but it would have been good if I had drawn it. Um, I briefly considered running both of these and the Consulate um, Dreadnought, and maybe making a black-white deck, um, but... In the end, I did the smart thing and didn't do that. Um, let's see. Human Rogue, Aetherborn Rogue, Aetherborn Artificer, and that's it. So, again, the rare I had back here with three Aetherborn wasn't enough to really run it. Um, I'll show you the rest of my black when we curve out the deck. Red seemed okay. Uh had an Aether Chaser, Frontline Rebel, and then a couple of big giants. So, okay, but I'm not playing that, right? And then High Spire Infusion and Takedown both made the sideboard of my main deck, so my deck was green-black, and I'm going to curve that out for you now. Do, do, do. train is real. I tweeted that hype train is real when I want to game with uh, the hype train. All right. Let's straighten this up a little bit, shall we? Ah, 
Sorry, my camera's crooked, so I'm having trouble getting it all to work out nicely. So I didn't have any one-drop creatures, which is totally fine. Um, I don't know if you can see the whole deck there. Maybe There we go. So this is the deck. Um, for one drop spells, I have Unbridled Growth and a Prey Upon for later, and Pacification Array, which it was great when I cast it, it was great when it was cast against me. I think it's just pretty solid in Sealed. In uh, Draft, yeah, I think I'd run one. It's two mana to tap something down. That seems good. Um, for two drop creatures, I have a Sky Skiff, which is fine. I don't have any one drops to uh, crew it with, but since it doesn't have haste, that doesn't really matter. Dund Operative is always good. Thriving Rats was good um, for me, and Aether Poisoner was excellent. Aether Poisoner, um, I, I got to attack turn three with it uh, three times and make a servo, and that was just fine. <clears throat> for three drop creatures, Rishkar made an appearance again. He was my promo. Um, he was not the principal reason I went green, but once I decided I was going green, uh, he absolutely made the deck. Fairgrounds Trumpeter, I never actually got to put a counter on it, but it did um, uh, take a removal spell twice. Silkweaver Elite is, it's a 2-2 two -two with reach, and a 2-2 two -two with reach for 3 is probably just fine. It didn't feel as good because I almost never drew a car card off it. I did draw a card twice, and both times that was fine. That was, that was good. They were both spells, and I was happy. But even just uh, playing it as a 2-2 two -two with reach for 3 is fine. And I should have been happy with that. And I was fairly satisfied, but it just felt like, uh, this card could do more. Aetherstream Leopard is good. Just good. I, um, what did I do? I played this turn three the majority of the time, and then, um, turn four... Usually my opponent didn't block because they were worried about me getting uh, Revolt, which we haven't actually hit anything with Re Revolt other than the Silkweaver Elite. But um, the things I have with Revolt were good, and so they were worried and didn't want to block. Now, Wild Wanderer is fine, and it helped me get to my end game, which is good. This... Untethered Express, the hype train, is real. Um, you remember how I said I made a servo with Aether Poisoner multiple times? Well, it turns out that then being able to leave a Death Toucher back and have a servo crew this is phenomenal. That play won me a couple of games, just, just like that. Um... Yeah, real good card. Lifecraft Cavalry, also very good. This is what people were afraid. They didn't want to block my stuff and have it die. I even swung into a board where uh, my thing would die and their thing would live, and they didn't block me because they were afraid I had this. When I didn't have this in hand, just because I was on five mana, um, it worked, and I knew it was going to work, before I swung, but that doesn't mean that, you know, is good. So, Fen Hauler is the one thing in the deck that probably shouldn't have been. I only have one, two, three, four, four artifacts, so generally I had to pay seven mana for it, but I also only really 
cared when the board was stalled out and I had the mana to pay. S still, I could have replaced it with something like, I don't know, a random black three drop creature or two drop creature, and it would have helped my Untethered Express, and it would have helped uh, have something to put Rishkar's counters on instead of this. So this was probably a mistake, but it did good work. Ironclad Revolutionary. Six drop, four four. When it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice an artifact. I lost a game because I mistakenly thought that this had revolt and not you sacrifice an artifact. So I made some really bad trades and then I had to further sacrifice my Sky Skiff to get the trigger. That was probably the worst um, play I made all day. And it was because, well, it was because I was dumb and didn't read the card. But there's this thing that Magic sometimes does where they have one or two cards in a set that have an ability that's like another ability in the set. There was one in uh, Cons of Tarkir where it cared about four toughness whereas there was a mechanic in cons for an entire group of cards that cared about four power, and I think that was a mistake. This isn't the same thing, but that's how it felt when I made the mistake. So, anyway, he was good. Um, he actually won me a game just on the drain life, so that was great. At the top end, my very biggest thing, Hello. Aether Wind Basker is a 7 drop. It is 4 green, green, green. Um, there was only one game I had this and couldn't cast it. Um, there was another game where I unfortunately had to scry it to the bottom on um, before drawing, and that felt really bad, but there was no way I was going to get to it with two land in hand. Um, there was a game, however, where I dropped it, and the next turn I swung with 14 energy sitting there. So, 21-21 uh, with Trample. Yeah, that felt good. <laughs> anyway, this card is nuts, insane, and bonkers. And there were like six open this weekend. There were three today and at least two yesterday, and probably one more that I can't think of. Um, when people open Mythics like this, they play them, so they seem a little more common than otherwise, but yeah, good card. For non-creature spells, I uh, already went over the one drops. Prey Upon uh, was usually pretty good because I'd have either just my Death Toucher or the Lifecraft Cavalry with the counters, or there was one time that I did it with the Basker. Generally, if the Basker, if there was something else that was big enough, I didn't use the Basker. I used the Untethered Express one time. Um, it had two counters on it already, so it was a six power thing. And uh, that was game. Cruel Finality and Essence Extraction both put in work. Uh, Cruel Finality, I killed something one time end of turn just to get the scry. Um, I did end up killing it. It was an aviary mechanic. When I really wanted to uh, block and uh, get him with this, but I needed the scry because I had Aetherwind Basker in hand and I needed one more green to cast it. So uh, Essence Extraction... I had a little trouble getting double black on turn three, but not a lot. Um, and usually by turn five, uh, this is still good because I could kill something, tap something down, swing. At five mana, I had tidy conclusions. Simple, destroy target creature. I only gained one life once, but it was still fine. And Perilous Predicament. I Every single time I cast this, I hit both an artifact creature and a non-artifact creature. 
that was just me, and that was sealed. So everyone was playing their their artifacts. Um, I did have to finagle it one time to make some bad trades so that they would only have the thing that I wanted to kill to sacrifice. Um, wasn't great in that instance, but it did kill what I wanted it to kill. In another instance, I just wanted to get rid of anything so that there were less creatures on my opponent's board. And in that case, it was great. Last thing, natural obsolescence. I didn't main deck this in the first two rounds, but then after I brought it in for round three, I kept it in for the rest of the um, tournament. I, I took out um, the implement of ferocity, I think it is, for it. Um, I thought I had enough removal, but this is another piece, and it was good. So, yeah. Anyway, that's the deck. Um, I went 3-2, and two and I uh, ended up in 7th place, uh, which is top 8 was prizes, so I won 3 packs. Uh-huh. And... Um, I might be doing something with these packs on the channel this week. I might not. I haven't decided yet. But uh, I felt good about coming in 16th of 61 and uh, 7th of 22. So top third both times, top quarter the first time, I think. Yes. Um, just barely. So... I easily could have gone 5-0 and with this deck. Um, I easily could have lost one round, too. Basically, I had just solid good games. Um, Judge John Winter um, at the Mana League uh, beat me today, whereas he didn't beat me yesterday. I beat him. Uh, same sort of thing, though. We, uh, we had... Some good games and some not so good games. So check out his channel. Um, I'm going to link it somewhere. And if you like this video or are looking for more magic related content, please subscribe to our channel. Um, like this video, share this video, and check out the blog where I think tomorrow I'm probably going to do a breakdown of both pools and all of my games over the weekend. And. Uh, write some sort of blog post for that. Um, Aether Revolt is super fun. I can't wait for it to come to Magic Online. And uh, check us out later in the month for more interesting Magic content. I am Step, and thank you for watching.